We're going to take apart and disassemble the power valves on this KX250. I got Mason and uh, George here, a couple of our students. Have you guys ever done this before? No. Great, so fun first time stuff, right? Um, we've pretty much laid out the, the tools that we're going to need for this job and hopefully we haven't overlooked anything. But before you take anything apart, the first thing we want to do is we really want to take a look at what we're dealing with before we just get crazy and disassemble it. So let's, uh, let's focus in here. And one of the things I noticed right away is there's no, and there's no way I can have anybody here is going to have every single model memorized when we work on such a variety of equipment. If you look in here, I could see, do you see that alignment dot right towards the top there? Or at least I should say alignment, but do you see where there's a dot? Yep. It's, it's right towards the top there, right here, okay? And it's just dirty. So our goal is we're going to get this thing all cleaned up and then be able to put it back together. So I just want to make a point or awareness that I do see some type of dimple or dot there. Uh, it should draw some concern that that might need to be lined up with something, right? Yep. Actually, it's a lot better without the light. So let's keep uh, just looking around here. Oops. And we've got a, a bolt that's going to be removed here. And right away, as you guys are getting familiar with this stuff, what's underneath that bolt? A crush washer, okay? So that means that's a sealing surface. Would that commonly be something that needs replaced then? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, right? So we'll go ahead and we'll keep moving around this area. We have another fastener here that's going to be removed, so we bet there's some way of sealing that. We had a cover and a gasket here, and then uh, our power valves are going to pull out this way once that pin is, is out of the way. Uh, a little more complex system with the Kawasaki here. I'm going to keep rotating around here. I don't see any more alignment marks right now. And I see here I have another type of retaining screw. And it uh, looks like I got a seal that might not even be fully seated. I'm not really sure till we get it apart, but it looks like it's, it's above the surface here. So I'm, it's, to me, I'm just saying, hey, you know what? I, I want to pay attention to this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to flip around uh, to the bottom. Hey, before I, I guess, flip the cylinder, do you guys see this guy right here? Mm -hmm. Any idea what that is? There's a crush washer under it. <coughs> What's that? It's a coolant drain. That's exactly what it is. So if you were just going to take the, the, the cylinder head off to check the piston or whatnot, what that allows you is to drain the cylinder down that far so you don't get coolant all over the motor and bench and whatnot. So a nice little feature there, right? All right, I'm going to go ahead and look at the bottom here. So in Kawasaki here, you can see that we have these three different pins here. These will be part of the pinions. And this is where all the timing happens for our rack and pinion system. So you guys are going to see that as we take that apart. This is pretty gummed up. Not sure uh, if it's going to be an easy one to take apart or hard. So we'll go ahead and get started here. What we're going to do is we're going to follow the manual step by step and do it in the order that they say for us to remove it. So if we take a look at the service manual here between George and Mason here, it looks like once we get to the cylinder, the exhaust valve, uh, we're going to remove it in this order. So let's guide you guys through that. Why don't you go ahead and start, uh, you can either take turns or whatnot. We're going to get that pin, which is this guy right there. And we've cracked these fasteners mostly loose. So this one here. That guy. Hold the cylinder for him. And then the other thing we're going to do is create a place to put our parts. Okay, did the ceiling washer come off with the fastener? Yeah, yep, okay. So while they're looking for the next step, so you guys can see what I'm looking for is to see if this surface or this edge is scarred up. If somebody's taking screwdrivers or pry it across here, it'll never seal. The ceiling washer part of it itself is, you're going to see here, if I remove it from the fastener, do you see how it's actually indented or it's actually not flat anymore? Guys, that's why you got to replace this stuff. Now, if I look at this side, it's looking pretty nice and flat. Okay, just, just replace this stuff. It's pretty inexpensive, but you got to remember to order it. Does this come in the gasket kits? No. It does not. So what some people will do in a pinch is they'll take this side and they'll put it on a piece of like emery cloth and flatten that back out. This aluminum is pretty easy to sand to get a nice flat surface, but once again, you're making it thinner and there could be problems that could arise, probably unlikely in this. Another thing that some people might choose to do, I do not recommend this in this application, just put a new washer on, but I have seen it where you might pull a motor apart and there's some Teflon tape on here that they use to seal it up, 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead for right now, I'm gonna put this back on with the crush side towards the, the bolt, and we'll uh, move forward to the next step. What do they say to do next? Pull out the, we'll pull it out first. The operating rod. Yeah, as far as you can, then take out the screw. So the manual tells you to open that valve, which means yeah. pull it out. It is. Okay. And that tell us, how's that screwdriver fit? Not too good. Not very well, does it? So why don't we flip the cylinder on its side like this, and let's uh, let's stick. Uh, yeah, we're we're good. And now try and put some downward pressure on that. Hold the cylinder, and he doesn't want to strip that. Ooh, he's got it good. Remember me talking a lot of times how our number two screwdrivers don't fit the best in a lot of these metric fasteners? This was definitely one of those cases. You really had to have a good feel. He did a good job. That, look at that. You guys see this? What a terrible fit. That's fully, fully in there. Can you also see the serrations now on, this, on the screwdriver bit? Yeah. He, he really had to be careful that. How easy is it going to be to strip that? It's really easy. Hard. Okay, so we want to make sure and see if the you can finish taking it out. What's underneath is Loctite. Yeah, that's what's Loctite. Kind of thread lock. Is there a way to get metrics? You know, I asked uh, Snap on this year about that, and I didn't get an answer back on that. Yeah. What's the idle gear? Okay. So now that that's out, do we need to do anything? No, that's it. Okay, next step. Look at their technique. So they're following the manual here. They went ahead, and, and George, just by habit, look at how he set the cylinder. He set the cylinder just like it is in the manual to, copy, to copy the process. Is that cool? Take advantage of using these photos so that you can work from that direction. Good job, guys. How do we get that on? Okay, is that the point we're at? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Idle gear. So let's try and just... Lift up the exhaust valve. Okay, we can't grab onto this with pliers. Okay, guys, we found a technique. The manual's not giving us any information, but we are just looking through here, and, and I knew that from the parts fish that these pieces are individual and they needed to come up first. So go ahead here, and you'll see we just are blowing air through this channel to put some pressure in here to see if these are going to pop up in one start. So we need to hover over this. Go ahead. Crank it. Okay. We're all the way up. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be intentional about how we lay this stuff out here. Okay. And this one here still might be kind of tricky, but I'm going to grab our little four-piece pick set here. And it's just, it's just that this is also really gummed up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And see how there's an O-ring around there creating that seal? Yeah. It's a good thing that it was sealing, but it was definitely giving us a little grief. Now, I think this one we're going to be able to get out. Why don't you go ahead and pull the idler gear out first, just like it says. Set it on here. What's it say do next? Exhaust, exhaust valves, remove the valve guides. Okay, go ahead and pull that one out next. Jesus, this is long. Just kind of keep wiggling. Did you notice here he didn't take any force? He really wanted to wiggle that around, and you might have to grab the rack. I think that's what they're calling the guide, and kind of wiggle it around as well, too. I think you got to rotate it to make clearance. Okay, go ahead and set that guy down. Okay, so now we got this other one here. This guy should have the availability to pull straight up now. So let's take a, take your rag, wrap around here. And very lightly with no effort. What I'm doing here is I'm still gonna move the rack. And you see the rack that grabbed onto these teeth. Yeah. Okay, and that's what opens and closes them, okay? So we still are still are caught up on this rack in here. Okay, so grab around there with a the rag. And together we'll make sure that we're loose. Lightly, just kind of try and get it up. Is it coming? We cannot scar that at all, so. Okay. 
So that doesn't seem to want to come. That O-ring seems to be doing a pretty good job, doesn't it? Yeah. So here's what we're going to do next. You're going to go back to the air, and I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to block the hole that was coming through. Make sense? So I'm going to hover. You'll just see the process here. We're going to blow air. I'm going to cover so it doesn't go, and go for it. Okay, let off. Well, that's not working. That guy is doing a good job sealing on that O-ring. So I'm going to try. Do you mind if I try to take a stab at this and just see what uh, where we were at? I'm going to double fold. Okay. Just gave it a little bit. Now we got a little little t teeth mark on there. What are we going to have to do with that? Emery, emery cloth. We're going to have to emery cloth that off. Okay, I'll let you go ahead and finish pulling it out. So what do you think Kawasaki wants us to do with it? How, how, are, you supposed to, how are you supposed to do that without hurting? So what he's doing is he's finding the sweet spot to get the clearance of this to come on through. Make sense? Oh, the teeth are down. The teeth are? Oh, yeah. Holy cow. What do you think broke those teeth? I've got a theory. Shearing. Timing was off? Human air. What do you want to bet? Somebody, that gear wasn't going in, somebody got themselves out a hammer and tried to tap it through? I mean, think of how this valves operate. It just slides back and forth. How would that ever break the teeth? I really believe this probably either the storage of the part and something got dropped on it, but more than likely, I think it was an installation issue. So our main problem right now is that there's no, there's no room to pull that through. No matter what we do, I can see what's going on here. We're gonna take this snap ring off and we're gonna pull this whole shaft out this direction. Does that make sense? So if we go here, I'm just gonna... Okay, we've got a little snap ring. Now try and pull that out the other direction. Just push it on through. Will it work? I need to get this up. Go ahead and pull it through. I don't know why, we'll, we'll get into the directions a little deeper uh, in a second, trying to figure out why it looked like that. It looked like we should have been able to just pull this up, but using our mechanics, is there a chance that this gear was maybe damaged by somebody else trying to force it through? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, I'm, I'm gonna read this one more time. Lift up the exhaust valves, oh wait. Look at guys, remove the valve guides. No, the valve guide, these are, these are what they're calling the valve guides. So those are C. And then it says, uh, lift up the exhaust valves by pulling out the operating rod, then take out the exhaust valves. Skipped a step. We skipped the order. Oops. Makes sense? Pull the rack all the way out before yep. you take And they're calling it a rod, and <coughs> we're calling it a rack and pinion. Because we'll, we'll get up here and take a look at this here. Here. So as we pull that in and out, you can see how it's going to change the direction or the relationship of that hole. So this is this is definitely junk, and we've actually got. To me, it looks like we got a couple of damaged teeth. You see how a couple of them are really sharp? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we need. Let's think about our parts. We need the rod. We need this power valve, and then what do we say about Eclipse? Okay, One-time one use. So we got some more parts now. Here's, here's the bad news, is that this requires the cylinder be off, to be off to do this, doesn't it? Yeah. I do want to look to see if there's any pieces of those valves down in here, and I'm not seeing anything. The other thing that's about the manual that's kind of confusing too is, do you notice here that it didn't tell us which direction to take this out? So then it gets to be a, just an experience um, option there. The reality of it was for me, what made me make that decision to go the other direction is it was just being too difficult and from my experience power valve stuff just comes apart pretty easy other than the sticking of the carbon. So I shouldn't have to beat things apart. Alright, well we're only halfway there on the Kawasaki. We've got that much so uh, done. So now we're going to flip to um, the top side of the cylinder here and I believe we're going to get into maybe this guy right here. So if we put this back together with those damaged teeth, what's what's probably going to happen? It would jam. 
it's on her left cover. For It'll run, and if it jams, if it sticks, is it going to hurt anything? So good. No. Okay. So what do we have? Like a paper gasket or something? Yeah. Or? Okay. All right. Keep on going. So would you guys agree that you know the the reading of the manual when we kind of do it fast or we fast forward it? it's really potentially getting us into trouble. So we need to be very literal on, as we read the paragraph style of instructions, we need to make sure that we are doing it in that order. Is it take off the nut for this? I don't see threads on there, so. So let's move forward. Take the gear out of storage. I don't think we'll be able to. I think that's gonna be machined. I think what's gonna happen on here is we're gonna remove we're going to remove this. So what our struggle is for the viewers here is per the manual, it looks like there should be a nut on here. Let's let's get in there and see if we can see any threads. No nut either? No. Okay, so, hey guys, this is a perfect example of what happens. Uh, a lot of times we're dealing with a service manual that's all-encompassing for multiple years. So as a mechanic, you're just going to have to look at, well, I don't have threads on there, so I'm going to omit that step and keep moving. As I look through here, Move the cover, remove the rod, cylinder, remove the main shaft nut from the main shaft, pull out the main gear. This is the end of the page, so what I'm curious if it's gonna move into something different. It's not, so let's just keep moving this direction. Notice the shaft is still attached here. Yeah. yeah. There might be a supplemental page. Have I talked much about supplemental manuals? A lot of times you have a, a base manual and then Kawasaki or Honda will just uh, send to the dealership the replacement pages that are updated and you literally just self-adhesive uh, into the manual you have. Make sense? So what I'm believing has possibly happened is when this manual was printed, that part right here might have been made in multiple pieces, but now it appears like the gear and the shaft is all one piece. Does that make sense? So if we just keep going forward with the directions, we'll see if we have any luck. We're going to take out that Allen screw. Yeah, that guy. A real quick glance, it almost looks like a torque fastener. Do you see how it has the sharp pointed edges? Yep. We got down here and got really close and saw, no, it was an Allen. Now, George, put that Allen in there and just kind of wiggle it back and forth to show how poor it fits. So you see it's pretty sloppy. Let's take it a step further here. Let's go this way. And I want you to see, do you see how far I can move this and the bolt's not even turning? I can move that Allen that far. What do we need to order as well, guys? Right here, right the right bolt. Not the right bolt, just a new one. It's just that it's rounded. So go ahead and remove it. We've already cracked it loose. So we're going to get this thing back to shape. How easy is it to round that fastener off? Yeah, that's over easy. It is, and it's a small faster. Guys, just it's a consumable. You gotta think about this as something that you're just gonna, you know, uh, mess up over time. Okay, so let's position the main exhaust valve full open and pull out the main shaft. Okay, so pull this up. Okay, and let's see if we can't get that gear out of there now. Gotta get the slide rail out first, don't we shame? What's that? And that slide rail, the thing that's holding that shaft in. Through the bolt that you uncovered? Yeah, we're trying to pull this out now. You know, it's coming yeah, out, but doesn't this, here. this Watch. shaft have to come nope. out? Just ready? See it? Okay, I'm, I'm going to put it back in here. I don't want to do the work. So this 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 whole shaft is supported. So what did, what did Brian, you talk about this. What did this actually do? Where's the fastener that held that in place? Right here. What did this do? Held that shaft from going back and forth. Okay, was there something inside there? Yeah, there's a like a um, uh, a rack. There's a rack shaft in there or something. Okay, there's a little uh, pin that looks like it wasn't installed correctly the last time. I could see a little piece in here. We don't really know something's going on there. Because on the parts fish, it shows it's a, like a rack or something. Right. So what the deal is to station that so it doesn't move back and forth. And maybe that's why it doesn't have the nut anymore. Okay. Well, we could go ahead and pull it out. So go ahead and pull that out. Notice here we're, as much as possible, we're not prying on anything or doing anything else at all. So I think what's going to happen is these two screws have got to come out because I think what happens is I think it, it prevents 
the whole bodies from coming out. Let's see if that's correct. Uh, looks like remove a unscrew the two main exhaust screws. So they're already cracked loose. We get those two nuts out. Looks like there's a washer under there that basically just hits that valve to stop it from pulling out. Where else have you seen like a, a nut and, uh, excuse me, a bolt and washer set up holding what? You guys just did it on your crankcases Holds somewhere. Your, um, gears and stuff in place, or bearings in place. Bearings, they're bearing retainers. So I think this is retaining that power valve assembly from coming out of it. Now let's just try and pull the whole assembly out. Let's take this guy here and just kind of get it out of our way for right now This, and set this here, okay? And so the question is, it's just that dirty. I didn't mean to pull it out that, that hard there, okay? But we'll take a look here. Okay, do you see how this actually, this power valve even has the ability to open like this too? Has it really spread apart. So it's a lot of places for it to gum up, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so when this goes far enough open, this body hits this, which causes this valve to, let's see what it's doing here. It's in this direction. It causes it to open up even further. Pretty, pretty, uh, extremely adjustable situation here, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so the, the hole that's underneath here is what we're trying to accomplish here. So we're just going to set this here. We get that cleaned up. Let's take a look in the cylinder now. And we can see here how much carbon buildup we actually have in there. Okay, we want to get this good and clean. And then when we assemble it per the manual, it's going to tell us to um, use two stroke oil to lubricate those parts and not like a whole bottle guys we're talking about just some lubrication to get it to where uh, it's not gonna be metal to metal contact this cylinder could also go in the ultrasonic um, I would be uh, cautious or concerned about this bushing uh, in the ultrasonic that it could fall out and then we've got a couple of dowel pins on the top here too so we have those concerns